Many videos show the process of mastering music, but we found almost nothing on this matter regarding film sound. So it's perfectly normal to ask yourself, is there such a thing as mastering process in the film sound post-production? So what is exactly happening after the final film sound mix is finished? We'll try to shed some light on this matter in our new Audio Forum Facts episode. As part of our Audio Forum conference, we had the opportunity to talk to a supervising sound editor, sound designer and re-recording mixer, Mark Mangini. He revealed to us what happens in sound post-production of a Hollywood film after the sound mix is over. Mark won the 2015 Academy Award for Best Sound Editing along with David White for their work on Mad Max Fury Road. In his extensive career, Mark worked on films such as Blade Runner 2049, The Fifth Element, The Green Mile, Star Trek IV, and Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. So before we continue, if you want to learn more about music production and sound design for any media, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button so that you get notified for every new video that we upload. Let's begin. Fact number one. Yes, there is a mastering phase in film sound post-production. Okay, the mix is done, and that's usually done by recording only stems. But uh, we have to send to Technicolor or Deluxe, the lab, uh, you know, one composite audio master. So we have to do what we call print mastering for all the various sound formats. On most films, print mastering is usually three to four days, you, especially if it's not a Dolby Atmos film. An Atmos film takes a lot more attention and time. Uh, so you're, you're making your 7.1 print master, 5.1 print master, uh, your international versions. Yeah, that's kind of what you end up doing. Okay, there may be some terms that Mark uses we should clarify real quick. So what are stems? In the film post sessions, you easily end up dealing with a few hundred channels in the mix. To scale down this number, professionals create a set of individual submixes called stems. Usually, these stems are ambiences, sound effects, foley, music, and dialogue. In short, stems are submixes of a larger mix that, when played together at equal audio levels, exactly recreate the full mix. After the mix is completed and approved, films generally require one last step called print mastering. Now, because we end up with stems in the mix, print mastering is a process where we combine the various stems into a final composite soundtrack the final version used for duplication and distribution. And lastly, there are the international versions, or the MND printmaster, where M and E stand for music and effects, respectively. This is essentially the film's soundtrack with the original language dialogue removed. This is used for foreign language versions, so-called dubbing. For example, if your country acquires the rights to show a certain film in theaters for an audience that requires dubbing in addition to subtitles, the distributor gets an M&D from the owner upon which the dubbing process is performed. And that's how your kids get to watch Spongebob in your local language. With this out of the way, let's move on to the two remaining facts. Fact number two, there is no mastering engineer per se. Unlike, I suppose, the music industry, um, you really want the people who mixed your film to mix your masters because they're the only ones that really know the sound the movie should have. And here's the distinct difference. Unlike in the music industry where every recording studio has different speakers on different alignment curves at different SPLs, you need a, a, an audio mastering engineer, a different person, to have a proper set of reference masters. But in cinema, remember, unlike music, we are on a standard. We have to be on the Academy X curve and we have to be at 85 SPLC weighted. So we know that the mix we approve is the mix that will be heard in the theater. So you don't need a, a special person with like really good ears and some fancy equipment. We need to make sure that the movie continues to sound consistent from master to master to master. Yes, it sounds logical because the mastering process in film is a lot different than in music production. There are various audio formats for theater distribution only, especially for the big Hollywood films. And then of course there's Blu-ray, there's DVD or you name it. So most of the mastering process is just making different distribution formats. Also, as Mark said, there are specific standards that have been established, whereas in music, Everything's just all over the place. You can bet 
that if we try to take the usual mastering chain from music mastering session and apply that to a film sound mix print master, we would probably completely mess up the relationship between dialogue, music, and sound effects, which is not a good idea. Fact number three, big Hollywood films have very, very, very long mastering sessions. Can you guess how long a single mastering session can be? Please leave your comment before you find out the shocking truth behind Blade Runner's sound mastering. On Blade Runner 2049, we spent five weeks making a Dolby Atmos master, a Dolby Atmos international minus dialogue master, an IMAX master, an IMAX international master, an Oro master, an Oro international master, a DTSX master, a DTSX international master, a 7.1 master, 5.1 master, a dialogue music and effects master, and then I think we also made a straight left right master. And that process does five weeks. Five weeks. How do you like that? You could almost finish the complete sound post-production for a less demanding independent film. However, we have to admit that the list of distribution formats for Blade Runner 2049 is very long. It wouldn't be a surprise if you haven't heard about many of them. We'll provide more info about that subject in the description, so please let us know in the comments if you need more details on this matter. We hope you learned something from this video. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button. Thank you for listening.